You must think I have a death wish, leaving everybody breathless. It's always my time, the city is mine. You, you should learn to just accept it. Yeah. Royalty is in my DNA. I'll never be the type to settle for okay. See me coming up, yeah, I'm on the way. Yeah. Covered down a stone, it'll never, never fade. fade. Heart of a gladiator, I'm back on my terminator. One look and they turn to vapor. I'm kind of an instigator, but not of the frying pan, but like an incinerator. Be feeling my energy like I'm plugged with generator. Accelerate until it's full speed. full speed. No other form will prosper against me. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand? This is why you should play Blood Letter. Most weapons in Albion and Line are very limited in the kind of content they're good for. Locus is good for large scale fights, Claws are good for ganking, and Blightstaff is good for frontline healing and small scale fights. Bloodletter is one of the few exceptions because the things that it does well are useful no matter what kind of content you're doing. Bloodletter's good damage and high mobility, combined with its unique ability to execute, make it a good pick in almost any situation. Whether you're solo or in a group, doing PvE, PvP, or anything in between. While some people might point out that the Infernal Scythe also has an execute, it's not even a tenth as good as the Bloodletter's execute. When each weapon needs to be leveled up separately, it's a huge positive for a weapon to be this flexible. It saves a lot of time and silver when you can get away with leveling only one weapon instead of many. Hopefully this has gotten you interested in playing Bloodletter, so let me explain the abilities. The best passive for Bloodletter is Deep Cuts. Every four basic attacks, you inflict a bleed that does a small amount of damage. With the Bloodletter's fast basic attacks, the damage from this passive can add up very quickly. For the Q ability, I always take Deadly Swipe. It's a short dash that does damage in an area while also giving you a small damage buff. In addition, half of the energy cost is refunded when you hit an enemy. The combination of AoE damage, mobility, and damage buff are all very useful for Bloodletter. For the W ability, I almost always take Chain Slash. You dash to a targeted enemy and then to three nearby enemies, dealing damage that increases with each hit. You also become invisible and immune to damage while dashing. This ability is great as a gap closer while also dealing a surprising amount of damage, especially on the third and fourth hits. Throwing Blades is the W ability you'll use if you don't have Chain Slash. You throw out three blades that deal damage, and you also gain a damage and move speed buff for each unique enemy hit, stacking up to three times. While the damage is fairly low, the mobility from the move speed buff at three stacks can be more useful than the limited mobility of Chain Slash. And now for the Bloodletter's iconic E ability, Lunging Stabs. You dash in a target direction, damaging all enemies you pass through. This ability is also an execute, dealing significantly more damage to enemies below 40% health. Landing the execute on an enemy player also reduces all of your cooldowns by 10 seconds. Every part of this ability is amazing. The execute makes you extremely dangerous to low health enemies, the freedom of mobility gives you a lot of options depending on how a fight is going, and in group fights, the cooldown reduction when you land the execute is very useful for keeping up the pressure. In fights, you'll want to spam Deadly Swipe off cooldown to either reposition or stick to an enemy while also maintaining your damage buff. Chain Slash can be used to close the gap on an enemy and burst them down, but sometimes it's worth waiting for opportunities to also dodge damage or cancel abilities that lock onto you. Note that while you are immune to damage, some CC effects will still apply. Save your E for potential execute targets, while you put out single target pressure with your basic attacks and passive. If you have the full damage buff from Deadly Swipe, the Execute will insta-kill most cloth armor users and even some leather armor users. Make sure to inspect enemies and keep track of their defensive abilities so that you don't waste your E on a target that you can't kill. If the fight is going poorly or you don't think you can get the Execute, you can always use your E as an escape tool. As always, be careful not to get too crazy. Going full monkey mode and stupidly chasing kills more often than not ends poorly. Some kills just aren't worth it. Part of what makes Bloodletter so versatile is its ability to work with many different playstyles and builds. When roaming the open world solo, I run Bloodletter with a build that maximizes damage. Mage Cal, Muzak, and Thetford Cape add to your damage, while Cleric Robe buys you time to burst a target down to the execute threshold. Minor work boots let you escape almost any situation you find yourself in, but other options include soldier boots or demon boots, which have lower cooldowns and give you the option to chase down enemies if need be. 
For this build, take Poisons and Beef Stews. This build excels at preying on squishy, vulnerable targets that you could quickly burst down. Because of the lack of sustain, you should avoid engaging in long drawn out fights. In group play, I run a build that balances durability and sustain while also still being able to dish out damage. Hellion Jacket and Facebreaker give you the sustain and extra durability needed to survive diving into the enemy backline. With Stalkerhood, your Execute will be able to insta-kill tankier targets that would have otherwise lived with a little bit of health left. Hunter Shoes allow you to quickly reposition, and Lemhurst Cape gives you some energy sustain. For this build, take Resistance Potions and either Deadwater Eel Stews or Beef Stews. Item power is very important for this build as you need both the damage to guarantee your executes will kill and the durability to dive deep for those executes. While some weapons can become boring after using them long enough, I never get tired of the Bloodletter's execute. The fame pop-up, the kill sound effect, the animation, and most importantly, the salt. All of it makes Bloodletter incredibly satisfying and a blast to play. Overall. I can say that I love the unique design of Bloodletter, and I hope you will too. Hey, this video is an experiment to see if anybody is interested in videos like these. Let me know in the comments what weapons we'd be interested in seeing a video on next. If you liked the video, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace. Sneaky, sneaky.